Hello, good people of YouTube. Mount Batten here. And today we have the brand new Tier 7 Premium Japanese Heavy Cruiser Maya in port to review for you guys today. As always, massive shout out to the channel's Patreons for making this review possible. I am not affiliated with nor supported by Wargaming in any way, shape, or form. So the generous donations from these Patreons make these reviews possible. So again, massive shout out to these guys. If you want to join Patreon, the link to that is in the description down below. It is the best place to support the channel besides watching the videos and streams. So the Maya has finally made her way into Wood Warship's PC at least. I believe she's been on Blitz for some time, but now finally she is here. So the Maya is a real still historical ship. She was one of the Takao class cruisers that were launched before the Second World War. We do have her sister in game with the um, the Otago as well. And if you take a look at the Otago and take a look at the Maya here, there's quite a few differences and there were quite a few differences between the two classes as the wars, wars went on. They were both refit in separate ways. The Maya was refitted to be an AA cruiser, which is fairly ironic. <laughs> she had her third turret removed later in the war to make way for more anti-aircraft guns. Uh, we'll talk about how effective those anti-aircraft guns are later in the video. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at the Maya's characteristics and her stats. We'll go through them, then I'll take you guys into a gameplay review section where I'll give her a score and talk about her quirks and features more. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so the armor layout, no big surprise here. It's a Japanese cruiser. She has a 16mm bow, 16mm stern, and bow and stern deck plating mid stern mid stern mid deck armor is 29 millimeters upper deck armor is 25 her torpedo plating on the side is 25 millimeters as well you strip all of that away you find her citadel high dry and exposed with 100, 102 millimeters of plating which is the same as the otago so again if you played the otago you, you know what to expect here or if you played any of the japanese cruisers you do know what to expect here as well you have of course lots of places where you can get pinned by well many a ship but if you do angle enough that 102 millimeter citadel side armor you can bounce of course a lot if you can angle correctly if the shells do hit there while you're angled correctly in terms of her HP, she gets 39,200 HP and 19% torpedo damage reduction. Just realized I have the flag zone. Let me go ahead and rip those off for you. There we go. Just the economic flag zone now. So 39,200 HP. That's actually only 800 HP less than the Otago at Tier 8. So pretty chunky cruiser there in terms of HP at Tier 7. Now her guns. She has 8 203mm guns. They reload in 16.5 seconds. They turn in 30 seconds. You have a maximum dispersion of 130 meters at 15.3 kilometers. Her HE shells, which again, this is a Japanese cruiser, so her HE shells are her highlight. They do a maximum damage of 3,000. They have a 17% chance of causing a fire on target. They can pin 34 millimeters of armor, which is more than you need at tier 7. And they come out the tubes at 840 meters a second. Some nice fast shells, though. They're there. Her AP maximum damage is 4,700, and they come out the tubes at 840 meters a second as well. So, again, some nice fast sh shells there as well. Now, that's a bit of a tongue twister there, isn't it? So, again, no surprise here. HE shells with good alpha and good fire chance. It's again, very Japanese of her. And her. Well, nope, whoops. Skip that. Oh, actually. She does have 127mm secondary guns. Um, they do exist. You're not going to be getting secondary kills with them. Of course, this is more of her AA, but we'll talk about that here in a moment. But if you are wondering, I guess I should mention it. They do reload in 5 seconds. They have a 56 kilometer range. Maximum damage of 2,100. 8% chance of causing a fire on the target. 21mm of pin. And they come out the tubes at 725m a second. But again, they're for AA. They're not really for secondary kills. Her torpedoes is where some differences start to occur. 
between the two ships besides the missing third turret. So you have 610 millimeter torps. They turn in 7.2 seconds. They reload in 120 seconds. They have a range of 8 kilometers, so two less kilometers than the Otago. But they have a maximum damage of 20,967. And they travel at 76 knots base. These are fast torpedoes that hit hard as hell. And again, we'll talk more about that in the gameplay section, but they are very nice. They do have less range. You know, you can't stealth torp like you can in the Otago. Not like, not, not like the Otago can, of course, you know, stealth torp for days, but she can do it by a very thin margin. But you can't do that here. But again, that 76 knot speed and that 20,000 maximum damage is very, very nice. Now, they are detected by 2.5 kilometers. But again, these things are moving at 76 knots, so it's not like they'll see them. They won't be able to do too much, but they'll be able to see them. She does get one rack of depth charges here in the back. I thought I was going blind on stream when I couldn't find them early, earlier. They're right here. Not too much there. But they do a maximum damage of 4,600. You get two charges, nine bombs in a charge, and they reload in 40 seconds. With the changes coming to depth charges and such, I won't get too much into those. A defense, so you get 27 of these 25mm guns, then you get 39 of these 25mm guns in a triple mount, and then you get 12 of the 127s like we mentioned earlier. Her A range goes out to 5.8 kilometers, which actually isn't too bad. She has a continuous damage rating of 155, 1330 damage via her, her flak shells, and then a 50% priority sector reinforcement. Maneuverability, the ship has a base top speed of 35.5 knots, a 780 meter turning circle radius, and a rotor shift time base of 10.1 seconds. Again, very nice rotor shift time here, just like the Otago. Concealment, she has a base range of 12.4 kilometers. For her box O gimmick, she does have a pretty big gimmick here too. You do see this. This is a main battery reload booster on a Japanese cruiser. Now they gave this to the Huga when the Hugo was released some time ago, but now they gave it to the Maya. Very interesting indeed. So you just have 50% boost to her main battery reload time for 15 seconds. It's enough to get three very fast salvos out. And on the 230mm guns, that does sound like a very promising proposition. Again, more on this later. Oh, it does recharge in um, 60 seconds too, so it's a pretty quick cooldown. You get two hills base. Yes, hills on a tier 7 heavy cruiser. That's pretty nice. Although sometimes that can be a sign of a fairly weak ship, but given the Maya's, um, well, unique armor geometry, again, if you've played Otago, you know, it is kind of needed. So it does regen 196 HP per second. It's active for 28 seconds and reloads in 80 seconds, and you get two charges of that. You get fighter. You do not get a choice of fighter or spotter like the Otago does. 60 second action time. You get three fighters. They fly around your ship in a 3 kilometer diameter, reloads in 90 seconds, you get 3 charges of this base. You do get a choice of Hydroacoustic Search or DFAA, Hydro goes out to 5 kilometers, detects ships at 5 kilometers as well, and you get Torpedo Detection at 3.5 kilometers, subs are spotted at 5 kilometers if they are at maximum depth, if they're at maximum depth it spots them at 2 kilometers. It's active for 100 seconds, reloads at 120 seconds, and again 3 charges. And then you get a damage con that's active for 5 seconds and reloads in 60 seconds. Alright, so that's the Hugo's characteristics and stats. I'm going to go ahead, slap my commander back on here, along with the build that I was running when I was playing her for this review. And I'll meet you guys right back here. Alrighty, so, for the module build, I went with Main Armaments Mod 1 to keep the turrets in the fight. I went with Engine Room Protection to keep the rudders and the engine active for as long as possible. Then I went with Aiming Systems Mod 1 to rein in the dispersion a bit more. Then I went with Steering Gears Mod 1 for another 20% boost to the rudder shift time and to have an absolutely insane rudder shift time on this ship. Now for the Commander build, I went with, well I would first if I was you, pick up Last Stand. Then I would go down and grab Demolition Expert for a better chance of causing the fire. Uh, last time, by the way, if you don't know, this does make it to where we end modules are knocked out, like your engine and your steering gears. It keeps working, but at 50% of their efficiency. But it's uh, very nice to have, especially on this ship. 
Then I would go down and grab Adrenaline Rush. My first and only four point skill would be Concealment Expert. I would come back to the top, grab Grease the Gears, come back down, and then grab Survivability Expert. Then grab Superintendent after that for another charge of all your consumables. So Heal, Hydro, Fighter, and Reload Booster. Then finally, I would grab Enhanced Torpedo Explosive Charge, which gives you another 15% boost to your torpedo damage. So, this now gives you a ship with 42,350 hit points at Tier 7, a cruiser with that many hit points. Your turrets now turn in 25 seconds, and you now have a 20% chance of causing a fire on your target with the Fire Flags and Demolition Expert. Your torpedoes now do, I am blind, 24,112 hit points of damage, which is insane for a cruiser to have torpedoes this good. And now your maneuverability, you have an 8.1 second rotor shift time, which is, again, fantastic. Oh, and your top speed is 37.3 knots with the speed flag equipped. And now you can sim us down to 11.2 kilometers. And you have three charges of your reload booster, three charges of a heal. You get four charges of your, of your fighter, four charges of hydro or DFAA. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pop into battle. I'll meet you guys there with my voiceover review of the Maya. All right, guys, voiceover Mountbatten here. So the Maya, we played her quite a bit on stream last night, both in randoms and in rank. The ship performed exceptionally well in rank battles when it was, of course, always top tier. And one of the most glaring issues was brought to light when we were playing her in random battles on stream. And this is something you should understand before you decide to pick up the ship one way or another is that this is a tier 7 ship and the way matchmaking is I was in tier 9 games almost constantly in this thing last night I think we had a handful of straight up tier 7 games that weren't in ranked so do consider that before I tell you this next part here this is a ship I would say is worth picking up but you have the Otago too which is at tier 8 which the Otago has you know better heal has better concealment better range at tier 8 and it's all around a better ship for its tier at tier 8 than maya is at tier 7. i'm not saying that maya is a bad ship but i'm just saying like the otago already exists and if you like what i'm about to talk about here and show off here with the footage in the background otago does everything that the, that the maya does but better in my opinion except maybe the AA for its tier, but but again, we'll talk about that here in a minute. But it, it is a ship I would say is worth picking up, especially if you like how the Otago plays. But let's go ahead and get into it. So the armor layout, again, like I said in the port section, if you play the Otago, any of the Japanese cruisers, there shouldn't be anything surprising to you here. You eat weird citadels, especially those shells that would normally nick your stern and any other cruiser and go straight on through an overpin. Those, of course, cause random citadels in the Maya. Again, if you played the Otago, you know what I'm talking about here. So it's, it's not a cruiser you're going to sit there and tank with at all. Survivability overall gets pretty low marks, of course. Again, if you play Japanese cruisers, you know what I'm talking about here. This is a ship you want to tank in. You don't want to get shot in this ship. Now, her guns are fantastic. That fire chance and that good HE Alpha is excellent. Absolutely excellent for dealing with enemy battleships and enemy uh, DDs. And, of course, enemy cruisers that give you time to sit there and chew on them. I had games where I had, like, 15 fire starters in Maya. It was fantastic. And that is especially helpful when you're constantly getting up tier to tier 10. Because that means you have a very, very good set of guns for dealing with Tier 9 ships. I think I said up, up to, to Tier 10. You get up to, to Tier 9. You get up to, to, up to, to Tier 10 in this thing, you're doing something exceptionally wrong. But when you get up to, to Tier 9, you're, you're going to be starting fires on Tier 9 ships, no problem. You're going to be burning down uh, FDGs and Iowas and Jean Bars left, right, and center. You won't have a problem with that. Which is great, because when you get up tiered, you get that boost to your economic income. So I had, um, I think the first two matches we had were like solid tier 9 games, and I was one of like two tier 7 ships. And I came in first on the team in my first two games in the Maya, in tier 9 games. Yeah, yeah, that's how good this ship is. 
So you're, you're actually not in that bad of a shape when you get up tiered when it comes to the gun department. The only thing that's lacking is the range. You have a 15.3 kilometer range, and since it's a tier 7 ship, you don't have access to the last upgrade module to where you could get a little bit more range out of the gun. So that is a, a, a falling off point for me. It's unfortunately pretty frustrating when you have ships that are like 16 kilometers away and you feel like you have little t-rex arms and you can't get out there to get them especially with the amount that you get up tiered to tier 9 here and there's another stat here that they could have tweaked that would have made up for this but they, they, they didn't so in tier 9 games you you can perform when you can get in range i'll put it like that and in tier 7 games, 15.3 kilometers, it's definitely enough. In tier 8 and tier 7 games, you're not really hurting for range here. And it does her job well. Again, good HE Alpha, good fire starting chance. The AP, I wouldn't really use it, again, like with all other Japanese cruisers. Unless you have a flat broadside of something you know you can citadel. If you're not sure you can citadel, just load HE and burn the thing down. And the reload booster does come in pretty useful... Um, here in many a scenario. What I tried to do for most of the night is I would try to start a fire with the gun without the reload booster, of course. Especially on, like, a battleship. Start a fire, hit the guy damage cons the one fire, wait 10, 20 seconds, fire again, pop the reload booster, get three quick salvos on him, set two or three more fires, and just burn the man down. It's great for that. It's also good for dealing with DDs, too. The Otago was already really good for dealing with DDs without the reload booster, but with, with, with the reload booster you can get three quick shots off on most enemy DDs, especially when you're at tier 7, you're top tier. And like, if you get a DD in Hydro and you got your reload booster up, they're, they're dead. There's not a lot they can do about it. They are deceased. It's great. It's a gimmick, but it's a gimmick that works very well with, these, with the ship's set of skills. Alright, the torpedoes. The torpedoes are fantastic on this thing. Now, like I mentioned in the port section, you can't stealth fire like you can with the Otago. Again, like it's not like you're stealth firing by like two or three kilometers of the Otago. It's literally a hundred meters. But it could still do it. You can't do that here in the Maya, but it's great for those. Well, I'm going down, I might as well throw my torps at him. I did that like three times in the stream last night, and it worked every time. We'll give them both sets. He switched to HE, but it's still going to kill me. Okay, we got both sets out, though. And they're very fast warps. We might have him here. Then the Wesser can worry about the New Mexico. There we go! We got him! I'm probably going to go down. We get torps off on this fella. Okay. We should be good though. We have two caps and uh, the shrine should. He's either gonna die to my torps. God, look how fast those torps are. They're they're so good. The fact that the man types sorry. <laughs> Oh, that's too good. Again, torps that do 24,000 damage, traveling at 76 knots. And that's without me building into their speed. You can build into the speed and get them very close to 80 knots, which is scary. And again, you're running into tier 7, tier 8 battleships a lot. Two torpedoes are enough to kill most tier 7 battleships that are, you know, by the time you death charge them they're probably down to like two-thirds of their health more than enough to deal with them and the good thing is that they're powerful enough to deal with tier 9 battleships and like you might be seeing on screen here the angles are good this is a japanese cruiser that you don't have to show perfect broadside to get your torpedoes off on i didn't know these were allowed to exist look at these torpedo angles they're great look at all the room you got to shove these torpedoes out on your ship with they're wonderful so they may seem useless being at 8 kilometers, but they're very, very, very useful. It's, it's again, a lovely set of torpedoes that work when a lot of, in a, in a lot of scenarios that I didn't think they were going to work well in. Again, when you have torpedoes flying darn near 80 knots, anything's possible. Alright, the AA 
which this ship was supposed to be an AA ship in real life and in game, it's kind of supposed to be because again, it does have more A mounts than um, its fellow tier seven Japanese cruisers. But those ships, you know, they're A so terrible that they're pretty much considered to not have AA. Um, I, I didn't run DFA, of course. I ran Hydro. Hydro's a lot more useful in most situations, you know, for hunting down DDs and smoke and trying to avoid torpedoes and, and the like. But even if you had DFA on, I don't think this would be like a plane shredder. Against tier 6 CVs, it was doing well. I wouldn't say, you know, absolutely denying the enemy entry in the airspace over you. But my again, my first game, Graf Zeppelin, was the CV on the enemy team. Dude didn't care about my AA at all. And that's a Graf Zeppelin. Her planes are fairly weak. Like, some of the weakest planes at tier 8. And he didn't care at all about my AA. Sure, if I had DFAA on, he might have cared a little bit more. I might have taken a couple more squadrons with uh, with me. But the guy just kept flying over me. Kept me spotted most of the match. Um, and I had to dodge to my heart's very much, very much displeasure. Uh, with some high blood pressure trying to perform well on stream. The first match in a new premium ship. Um, yeah, so it, it doesn't have great AA. I wouldn't really build into it, despite its history. Um, which, ironically, it built so much into AA, but then it got sunk by some rings in the Battle of Leyte Gulf in real life. So, yeah. Maneuverability, 37.3 knots is a very high top speed for a Tier 7 cruiser. And this rudder shift time with the build that I have on it is an absolute godsend. Like I was said when I was talking about the armor survivability of the ship, you don't want to get hit. The great thing is... You can avoid being hit with this 8.1 second rudder shift time. You have such a maneuverable ship here at the Maya. It is fantastic. We were juking all night last night, uh, dodging shells from across the map from battleships, dodging torpedoes. It's fantastic. Again, just like the Otago. Um, American battleships, they don't have a, a chance in hell of hitting you if you're paying attention. I lived so long against, I think it was a Colorado last night on stream. It was hilarious how, how good the ship is at dodging. Again, just like the Otago. Concealment, this is the skill I think they could have toned down a little bit more to compensate for its range, especially, again, knowing that this ship's going to get double up tiered a lot. I think if they would have toned it down to like a 10.5 or a 10 kilometer flat detection range, this ship would be absolutely fantastic. But unfortunately, it only goes down 11.2, which gives you around 4-ish kilometers worth of playing range where you can, you know, have some concealment with your main battery guns reaching out a little bit further past it, which the Otago has plenty of. There's plenty of range between your detection range and your main battery gun range. That's one of the Otago's strongest suits. You can, of course, sneak into a place, fire your guns, and then choose to disengage essentially at your will because again you have like a 9.9 .9 kilometer summit range with the otago with a full build uh the maya doesn't get that unfortunately so you're not as stealthy as the otago in a ship that gets double up tier to tier 9 and a very painful up tier so i wish they would have toned that down a little bit but overall i would say this is a ship that's a good pickup if you don't have otago but on the other hand, I would also say, well, if you don't have a Tago, go buy a Tago, <laughs> because a Tago is better than, than this ship. Not saying that this ship is bad, because a Tago is, like, one of my top five premiums in this game overall, as, as it's been number two and three in several of those lists that I've made. It's a very, 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 very good premium, the Otago. And the Maya, since it plays very, 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 very similar to the Otago, is also a very, very, very good premium, but I wouldn't recommend it over the Otago. So if you don't have the Otago and you're watching this video, go get the Otago if you like what you see here. It doesn't have the reload booster, it doesn't have the insane torpedoes, but overall it has a better set of guns, better range, better concealment, and will get you more consistent results. And it's an, a, a much better placement in matchmaking being a tier 8 ship rather than being a tier 7 ship. Because tier 8's getting up to, to tier 10. They cope a lot better with that than Tier 7's being up tier to Tier 9. And plus Tier 8's on the deal with Super Ships too. Not like Tier 7's do either, I'm just saying that as well. Currently they don't have to deal with Super Ships, I could change in the future. But, yeah, if you like the Otago, and you have the Otago, is this worth picking up? I would say so, because you do get a bit better of a farm, farming Tier 9 ships in the Maya. And if you already have the Otago, and if you're good in the Otago, you can probably do fantastically well in the Maya as well. Um, 
the torpedoes and the reload booster are almost enough of a mix-up to make it worth it if you already have the Otago. It's kind of a side grade to the Otago, I guess. You could look at it like that. But I wouldn't say they're enough to warrant buying the ship outright if you already have the Otago. And you might like the Otago, but you're not a huge fan of her. You know? Other than that, I'd say, again, if you got the Otago, no real need to pick up this ship. But I wouldn't say don't pick it up. It's a pretty darn good ship. It just gets really shattered by matchmaking at this moment. Overall, I'd give this ship... An 8 out of 10. The pros being the good guns, good dispersion, good Japanese HE Alpha, insane torpedoes. These torpedoes do so much damage and are so useful. The reload booster is a nice way to farm damage and also absolutely murder other DDs. Again, if you have something with a hydro and you got your reload booster up, that DD's dead. And again, it does have hydro or DFAA depending upon how you want to play the ship. It's down... To, oh, and the torpedo angles. I almost forgot. The torpedo angles are amazing for a Japanese cruiser. The downsides being it's got 11.2 kilometer maximum consumment, 15 point, what, 3 kilometer maximum range, and it does sit up a little bit higher up out of the water than the Otago does because they did remove the third turret, so the, sh the ship sits higher up, so you get a couple more Citadel shots that you probably wouldn't get and something like the Otago, and it does get stuck with Tier 7 matchmaking, which is, again, absolutely abysmal at the moment. So that's my Maya review, guys. Let me know what you guys think about her in the comments down below. Again, a ship that I would say is worth picking up if you do like how the Otago plays, but if you don't have the Otago, buy the Otago. It's better than this thing, but again, it's not a bad ship. It's just that the, the Otago exists. So guys, again, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Saturday and have a wonderful weekend. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. When we hit 35,000 subs, we're getting very close to that goal. I am planning on doing a giveaway when we get there. So stick around for that. Again, hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.